everyone. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Business First with the Bank. 2016. So we're delighted to see all of you here. Um, great audience. We also have some live streaming. So anyone worldwide who can see us now, hello. Uh, we have a fabulous show for you. We hope. We hope. <laughs> and uh, of course, this is physics with a bang. So how should we start this? So are you ready for a bang? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so are you ready? You're ready. You're all ready. Okay, it may be loud. Careful. Fingers in your ears. Whoa. <coughs> so that was that was a bang. So you want to hear it again? Yeah. All right. So let's have a second bang. We got one more balloon. Got to try it. Okay, so are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> All right. Okay, so those were hydrogen balloons that balloons were filled with hydrogen, and so we just exploded them, and balloons filled with hydrogen float because hydrogen is very light gas, and so that floats above the air, and so that's why the balloons were uh, up in the air and why we were able to explode them. Now, we have uh, today some very special people with us, two scientists from our lab, Sophia and Xiaoyu. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they are going to use our research cameras in order to show what you just saw, but see it in slow motion. So what you heard was a uh, explosion, and it went too fast for you to see. This is what you would have seen if you had much faster eyes. Right. So you see the balloon, you see the match get close, and you see how the balloon retracts before there is actually any explosion. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> so that's, that's the physics right now. Now comes the chemistry. Now comes the explosion itself, right? <laughs> right? Isn't that incredible? So how many frames was that? That was at 7,000 frames per second. So that's why you can't see it with, with the naked eye, right? OK. So. We just told you about the hydrogen balloons and hydrogen balloons. That was basically how uh, people tried to fly before they had airplanes, where they filled these uh, dirigibles with uh, light gas, like hydrogen. And th then they invented the airplanes. And the airplanes work on a somewhat different principle. And so uh, this is the idea of the Bernoulli effect, where if you have a high speed wind, the pressure is lower in the wind, so things will get sucked into the wind. So let's see if we can do that here. So my lips are above the paper, and so I'm blowing above the paper. And even though I'm blowing there, instead of the paper being forced out of the way, it's actually brought up into the fashion. However, I can't do this uh, too well because I get dizzy. Yeah. So Plus I thought we could do. Yeah, but it's also just a tiny piece of paper, you know, so why don't we blow over this thing here? Okay, well, let's do industrial style. Okay. <laughs> so, this is the industrial style version of this. And so, this is above the paper. We're going to have the uh, air going above the paper and see what happens. <laughs> It actually takes that big sheet of paper and pulls it up into the air stream. I'd say we try a long piece of paper. What do you say? I think a long piece of paper would be good. <laughs> so let's try that long piece of paper. How about a long piece of paper? Are you ready? Okay.
<laughs> All right. <laughs> yep. I'll do it. All right, so that was a little bit of air being blown. And now we use the same ideas, but actually what we're doing is first we'll, we'll fill this tube with gas. So this is a, just a cylinder, a metal cylinder with some small holes along the top and uh, Heinrich put on some gas, so it's going through this tube, and where it comes out of those little holes, you can see that there's a, a, a flame. So this is just like your countertop at home if you have a gas countertop. But what we also have with this tube is at this end, we have a speaker. So that if we put a sound into the speaker, it's going to create a wave in the gas down this tube, and where there's a high pressure, you will see more gas coming out of that region, and when there's a low pressure, there won't be as much gas coming out. So let's see if, if I put a sound through here, whether we can see anything about that happening in the set of the flames that are across the top here. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of nice. <laughs> okay, so that was some music that you just heard. So it was quiet and nice, and so you could hear the sound. And so that was a beautiful melody that we got to hear. But how many of you take music lessons? So quite a number of you take music lessons. And what's the other thing? Not only do you have a tune, but you're sup also supposed to have a rhythm, right? That you can't have really music unless you have a good rhythm to go with it. And so what do your music teachers tell you to do is that you're supposed to, you're supposed to have a, uh, a good beat. And so how do you keep time with a good beat? Well, you have a metronome. And so we have here some very nice metronomes. You can hear that ticking, right? Okay, so if one metronome is good, two should be better, right? So let's put two in and three. Four. F uh, five now. Okay. That's not really much better, is it? It's a lot worse. I can't hear anything now. I mean, how can you keep a beat to, to that? And so what we want to show you is that we can try and get all of these metronomes back together again. We're lucky. Be patient. I've got to be patient. Okay, now we're getting it. Got 
one more left to go. So now this was a quiet sound. And now we're going to have a loud sound. And the idea is that we use sound now to break something. Can you imagine to make sound so loud that it actually breaks, in this case, a glass? So you see right here is a glass. And we'll put that up here also on the screen with the camera. So you see a close-up of that glass. It's a wine glass. And there are two speakers underneath. And Josh here will attempt to create a sound strong enough with these speakers to get that glass to break. With nothing but sound. The, the uh, glass is not attached to the speakers. It's just in front of the speakers. <laughs> All right. Can you all see the glass? So just you can just watch it now and then we'll play it back in slow motion one more time for you'll you. You'll know. Ready? Now this could be So you'll know when the sound comes because you're gonna want to put your hands in your ears. <laughs> Are we playing it back already? Okay, let's see. So have a, have a look at that. What? The video stuff. Okay. There we go. Let's try that again. Right again, we can use this high-speed video, which is actually our research-grade camera uh, that uh, Xiao Yu and Sophia are using here to, to pick out things that you couldn't see with your naked eye. So that was how many frames a second? Uh, 9,900 frames a second. Okay, thank you. Okay. So that was sound, and now we're going to uh, do some things with gas. And so what I have here is some alcohol and a jug. And so I'm just going to put this alcohol in this jug, not too much. And then I'm going to close it off, and I'm going to talk to you for a while while I spin this around. Okay, so I have to spin this around, and I want all that alcohol inside here to evaporate. That's the idea of this. I want it to, uh, to evaporate. And so what is the moral of this story is that uh, there is a wonderful YouTube video that you can look where uh, it shows the dangers of gas. Okay, And so this YouTube had a uh, person pulling up to a gas pump. This was shot live uh, by the, the security camera. 
and no one got hurt, so you don't have to worry about that. But uh, this person put the their the hose into the their uh, gas tank, and because it was winter and cold, they went and got back into their car, and so the finished filling up. And then when they were uh, finished with, uh, you know, ready to take it out, she uh, came out of the, uh, of the car and made one terrible mistake, is she touched the gas pump handle. And the whole thing blew up. And you know, there's fire everywhere. And as I said, no one was hurt. But it shows how important it is to be very careful when you have any kind of flammable gases around. And so that's the story that I want to tell you so that now I should be ready for this. So I put that little bit of uh, alcohol in here. It's now evaporated pretty well. And now what I'm going to try to do is see what happens if I put a little bit of light in here. OK, so here we go. OK, are you ready? You ready? OK. All right. So that's why you should be very careful about any kind of flammable gases. And there are plenty of flammable gases, and you should just always make sure that you don't have static electricity on you when you're dealing with it. Right, and that's the point, right? So the gases are one thing, but a spark in that gas or a flame in that gas, that gets it going. So you just saw what Sid did. I have another one here, and I was thinking, why, why move, stand this thing up straight? Why don't we just uh, maybe stand it on its side and see what would happen? So let me uh, get the uh, rest out of here. So far, so good. And now comes the spark, right? And let's see what would happen here. Still, still on fire. Still going. So it's still to? going. <laughs> okay, so now uh, you can watch this. Uh, what happened in that? Uh, Are we ready? Uh, first. Uh, yeah. Let let let's sh uh, replay that. Oops. Sorry. One more time. Uh, here we go. So you see how the flame is started at the top of the container, which you can hardly see, and then it engulfs the interior of the container and comes you know, all the way down. And again, this happens so fast that it's hard to see with the naked eye, but you can pull it out by this slow motion camera here for us. <coughs> all right. OK, so th those were gases. And so now what we want to do is we want to go and talk a little bit about liquids. And so here is a liquid. And so this is a very simple thing. You've probably all seen it before, which is I have a liquid and I stick a rod into it. And if you look at it, the rod looks bent. That is, there's a difference in the what's called the index of refraction of the fluid and the air. And so when this uh, stick goes in into the pierces the, the surface, you see it looks bent just as it crosses that thing. So that was what this demonstration is about. And so uh, I uh, get rid of this. And now we just have this empty container with nothing in it, right? So it's just an right? empty container really? full True. of fluid. But sure. Uh, well, actually, there was something else in it. And you know that was just in there. And you couldn't see it. Why? Because the index of refraction of this was the same as the index of refraction of the oil. And so they were so well matched that you couldn't see the difference between them. And so that's the end of uh, this. But let's just see. Oh, I guess there was something else in here. There was another uh, plate. <laughs> and, oops, and we now actually have two extra pieces that uh, were in there. Uh, and let's see, anything else? 
oh yeah, there's, there's more things in here. <laughs> so there's lots of stuff in here, and you can't see them because as this thing goes in, it disappears because the index contractions are so well matched. And the, um, th these are common things that you know about, that is this, uh, um, these glass things that, that I sh have here uh, are just what you put in your oven. It's Pyrex glass. So this is the ordinary Pyrex glass that you have. And the other thing that you uh, have here is something that you use to is vegetable oil. And Wesson oil is the one that happens to have a almost perfect match of the index of refraction of Pyrex with the index uh, of uh, the oil itself. And so this is um, they don't tell you exactly how you clean up after <laughs> it, but it's good enough. Okay, so that's one thing you can do with the fluid. Ah, good. Uh, the second thing I want to do is I want to show you something about what the power of physics is. is uh, you all know that ordinary people can't turn time around and turn time backwards. That, that's impossible. But you didn't ask physicists, so physicists might be able to do that. So I want to see if I can do that for you today. So what is the thing that I have here? I have, on the outside, I have a plastic cylinder. On the inside, I have a white plastic cylinder. And I can turn this crank, which turns that inner cylinder around, around and around and around inside there. And in between the two cylinders, I have a liquid called glycerol. It's, this is just the liquid that you have um, uh, if you go to the grocery uh, you know, uh, drugstore to get something to make very tough, large uh, soap bubbles for your, you know, to, to make big soap bubbles. This is the stuff that you put in there. So it's, again, a common thing that you have. So uh, I just have that between these two uh, cylinders. And now, as I turn this around, you can't see anything because it's clear. So what I was going to do is I was going to now take this and try and put some dye in at some point along this so you can see the uh, see what I'm t telling you that as I turn this around I will mix up the uh, fluid so here it is I'm going to um, put in some dye and so here's a line well, this is physics, so I'm um, make a P for physics. Okay, so so that's physics with a P. Okay, <laughs> and so now I'm going to turn this up, and you'll see it all disappear. So so it's gone. Okay, it's, it's nowhere to be found. And now, what I'm going to do is say, OK, I want to reverse time. So I'm going to continue turning this. And let's see what happens. <laughs> OK. So. What I did was uh, not magic, but what if those of you who are very observant saw, as I turned it around, and then I stopped, and I said, I'm going to now continue turning. I continued turning, but I turned it in the opposite direction. So I wound it up, and then I unwound it. And what's special about this is that I can unmix things in this geometry with this kind of a fluid. So this is just a, uh, uh, hard as it is to somehow have the intuition that this would work, uh, it is something that you can uh, see, and it's just a theorem in fluid mechanics that we're, we're just demonstrating to you here. So that was glycerol, and a beautiful theorem, right, that allows you to reverse, essentially, mixing and, and uh, unmix the dye and the liquid. But let's go back to just an ordinary liquid now, like ordinary water. So I have a beautiful water balloon right here. And we were going to now show you what would happen if we pop this balloon, right? So this is something we apparently 
would immediately understand what should happen there. So let, let's, let's see, uh, let me get it in, in focus here and also in, in the view of the camera. All right, so it's a balloon, it's water, and uh, there's also a little duck in there, a little plastic duck. So what should happen next? Are we ready? Yes. You are you ready to go? Yeah. All right, so I'll just put my uh, needle here and uh, push it right now. So did you see what happened? You saw everything, right? Well, we have to play this back. So let's do that now. Here we go. And just as with the hydrogen balloon, what we'll see is that initially the water, so the interior doesn't do really anything. It's just that skin that moves. So let's see if we can, can tease that out. So you see the needle is going in ever so slightly. Do you see that? And the balloon stays essentially, the shape of the water stays the shape of the balloon for quite a while and then eventually uh, it starts to accelerate downward. Let's see, we're showing that I guess one more time, right? There you go. And just let it run a little bit. Yeah. And, and there's the, the duck. duck. That's that yellow thing coming there. All right. Okay. So what's this over here, Heinrich? Okay, so, so that was now a very simple liquid water. And now we continue with this, this liquid theme. And this is kind of like water. It is actually water, but we mixed something else in there, which is cornstarch. And uh, so this is a milky liquid, right? See that? And the question is, what happens if we just drop something in there? So that's what I want to do. What should he drop in there? Oh, you want a bowling ball. Oh. Uh, First of all, we got to drop it from here, or should we go up a little bit? <laughs> all right. Is this high enough? Are you sure? Yeah. But this is good. I'm, I'm scared of heights. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Maybe like this. Well, let's first try what would happen if we drop something simple. What do you think? What would you like me to drop? Somebody said, what, a glass? A gl my glasses. No, 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 no. I How have an idea. An How about an egg? How about an egg? <laughs> oh, let's drop an egg. Okay. All right, who thinks the egg will break? Who thinks the egg will stay like it is? How many right. think it's a hard boiled egg? Okay. Three, two, one. Look at that. This crazy liquid just buffets the egg and it doesn't crack. Well, maybe it was, you think it's probably not a raw egg, right? Yeah, you probably think it's a hard boiled egg. We just cooked it. Okay, so uh, could I get a volunteer to come down? <laughs> okay, could you come down? Yes, you. Yes, you. Yes. I want your help. Okay, so this is the egg I fished out of there. It's gooey and messy. And what I'd like you to do is try and see if it's a hard boiled egg by smashing it against the wall. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it was not, and here, here you go. Thank so, you. So what's your name? Buddy? Elaine, so let's give Elaine a hand. Thank you very much, Elaine. So that was definitely not 
a hard-boiled egg. So oh, this that's right, isn't it? No. No. Okay. okay. Well, so it's also not your ordinary liquid, right? It, it buffets things much more than you might think. So uh, why don't we throw some other stuff in here, right? Yeah, what? Yeah. Bowling ball? Yeah. No. no. Oh. Oh. Is this big enough? But uh, maybe we should go a little higher. Yeah. All right. Wow. All right. So now. So uh, everyone there, you're going to get soaked, right? Yeah, you get. I mean, you're okay with that, right? Your camera is going to be. Wet, right? It's it's isn't that true? Okay, this only works if you're really quiet. Three, two, one. Look at that. It didn't even sink in one bit. Right, so this is this very, very interesting liquid that transforms into a solid on impact. <laughs> All right, what else can we do? Here is an idea. Ah, oh. so here is some a way that we can blow air at you. Can you feel that? Just a drum. Can you feel it? Yeah. Okay, so you can feel it. So do you see how it's coming out of here? You can feel that, right, can't you? Oh, oh well, okay. I don't know. Maybe it would be easier if you could see it. See, you can feel it. Okay, so let's but let's put some smoke in, see if we can see, see what it. we can do to see if you can see the air coming out of here. You dare me. <laughs> okay, are we ready? Are you ready? Okay. Okay, so this is uh, something more that we can do with air and gases. And uh, we've seen uh, a little bit about how we have transportation with lighters and air balloons. We've had uh, transportation with airplanes with the Bernoulli effect. We've had a rocket go off with the uh, uh, whoosh that, bottle. That whoosh bottle that came up. Now we want to see what happens with a boat. Okay, so this is clearly a boat, and so I need, to, again, to have some uh, good uh, volunteers to come down. Volunteer, maybe so, uh, all the way, way from the in back. the back. 
Uh, with this nice striped shirt. Yes, you, please. Okay. And what's your name? Nobby. Nobby? This is Nobby. Let's give her a hand. <laughs> and your job is to make sure that we're not cheating anyone, okay? And so what I want you to make sure is that we're not putting any liquid in here, right? This is just a gas in here, right? And now I have this uh, gas tank open. It's trying to fill this. Mm -hmm. And now Heinrich is going to take this top off very carefully. Very carefully. Okay. But no water goes in, right? No water. And uh, can you say there's no any water in here? There's no water in there. Okay. So now we're going to try and float your boat. Okay. Wow. Oh, 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 oh. Look at that. So just because this gas that we put in here is a gas that's heavier than air, this boat can float on that layer of gas. And so if we want to sink this boat, what do we do? Well, we have to take the gas <laughs> and <laughs> move it in here. So, Nabi, do you want to try and do one? Good. Yes, thank you. Yep. <laughs> you got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Let's do it a few more times. You got it just right. Do you see it slowly sink? Yeah. It's a good boat. Okay. This is a very uh, sturdy boat. <laughs> so, thank you, Robbie. Thank you. So bowling ball seems to be part of the show, okay? So uh, what we're going to try and do is a death-defying stunt here. Oh yes, this is what you've all been waiting for. Okay, and so this is just a bowling ball attached with a long line to the ceiling here, and so it'll just swing back and forth, right? We've seen this happen before, swinging back and forth. But I'm going to bet my nose on this, okay? So what I claim is that if I start the ball at some height, it will never go any higher than that height. And so I'm going to start this here against the wall so you can see that. We have an egg here so that uh, this egg, uh, you know, it won't break the egg, right, because it's, uh, uh, it's sitting right here. And so we will now let this thing go. Yay. Oh! Uh-oh, uh-oh. Well, okay. That was just an egg. Now, how, how, how about this? How about my nose? Oh, uh, maybe we could have just a little, yes, this is, <laughs> thank you. Uh, uh, okay, so I'm going to put my head here where uh, I cannot move my head back. I'm going to put this up by my nose, and then I'm going to let this thing go. So what's going to happen? Is it going to... Uh, do like it did the egg and I have a, an egg-shaped nose? <laughs> or will I be okay at the end of the day? Let's so see. Here I'm going to, I believe, I believe in physics. Here we go. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. So what I did was that, ag again, in the first time that when I let it go, I gave it a little push, and it was giving it that extra little push that gave it that little bit more of the energy in order to, so that's why it was able to come back higher than where yeah. I started, okay? The second time, believe it or not, I was very careful not to give it that extra push. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, talking about uh, dangerous stuff. Okay, this is very dangerous this and is going to be very loud. 
He's not. He's going to tell you it's not. But don't believe him. Uh, so, uh. so what we have here is a fire extinguisher filled with gas, just gas, and I have this little handle here, and I can let the gas out. And, and the gas will go exactly gas. into your lens. So you just let you know, it'll it'll be it'll be really quiet, if you know what I no. mean. No. Okay. Are you ready for that? Carpet tube. So if I take a coin and I drop it through the tube, what's going to happen? Okay. Let's try it. Done. Yeah. All right. Okay, that was just a coin. Yeah. Now, how about we take something more fragile and more expensive? Let's try it. Mm. Well, I have this very fancy piece of metal. It's a magnet. Uh, I was told it's. Sorry, go right here. <laughs> so this is a very strong magnet, uh, and it's quite heavy, and it's very expensive, and if it hits the floor, it's going to break. So that would be a shame. Is it magnet? It is magnetic. But this thing is copper, so you probably know copper is not magnetic, so these things don't actually stick to each other. Okay? okay. Shall we drop it? Uh, I'm sure you don't want to you know, catch it. Okay. Fine. Okay, okay. let's see. Yeah. Whoop. Where did it go? something levitate for a longer yeah. time yeah? yeah all right so that copper is a conductor but we want something better than that so we're gonna use a superconductor so here we have a little bath of liquid nitrogen and in it we have these two special pieces of superconductor <coughs> I'm gonna take one of them and I'm gonna put it on this magnetic track Is it actually levitated or not? <laughs> Shall we try to pick it up a little? Yeah, sure, why not? All right, all right. Careful. Ooh, it's Ooh. still there, it's hanging there. Ooh. Ooh. All right, this is kind of heavy. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's, let's not push it too okay. much. Okay, all right, well, we want to make it now hang upside down, but we're too weak to turn this thing upside down. So we're going to use this track over here. So let's see what's going to happen now. OK. Now what if I put it on the bottom? Yeah, let's see. Yeah? <laughs> so 
one day, you guys, this is going to be a train. It's going to be, we're going to have super magnetic trains, super conducting trains. <laughs> and you're going to be traveling around without friction. You're back. Oh, we're back. Oh, oh that was fun. Why do we have to be this back now? So, he survived. You all have, you all have phones, don't you? And you all, yeah. Yes, you do. And you all have some music on phones, don't you? Okay. So why don't we play some music off my phone now, and we put it on on the big loudspeaker, okay? Okay, right, and uh, but we, we have to plug it in. Yeah, let's unwind this. It's a long cord. I want to okay. walk around a little bit. So, and then uh, Van here is plugging it in. I plug it into my output here. And then let's see now we're playing it. Um, What? Why'd you do that, Heinrich? I don't know. Now we can't hear any music, can we? Oh. What? <laughs> what is going on? I guess we conduct electricity just like that, right? I guess so. So I wonder whether we could get more people to conduct electricity. All right. So why don't I walk up here? You're going to walk up that side. Okay. Maybe, uh, maybe what we'll do is... Uh, you guys, can you hold hands here? Just row, just this all hold hands. Can you do that? So, so you hold hands, and and then you know you touch me. <laughs> you try this one. <laughs> yeah. So, can we get more than one row together? Can we do more? Why don't you uh, hold your hands? And uh, then you go over, and then we come back. You need to go back. Okay. Right? You need here. That's, that's yeah, and then we come back. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> well, you get to see well. You guys need to hold hands. Okay, let's see if, if we can do it. This is the first. We have never done that before. So congratulations to all of you for keeping your hands held. So now introduce yourself to your neighbors and you're all friends for life. So now you obviously you understand that that was electricity, but that's electricity that would go into your earphones and that was a very low level, right? That's why, why you guys didn't feel anything, of course, right? But this is physics with a bang. We have to crank up the voltage a little bit. And so why don't we uh, look now at electricity at a much more lethal level, okay? Okay, this is a lethal level. Okay, so am I ready to be lethal? Absolutely. Okay. So we have your machine that generates the sort of thing you would see in a lighting, lightning strike, okay? All right, are we ready? So can you all see those sparks? And can you see the sparks? No. Now can you see the sparks? Now? Okay, so what's happening is I'm just pointing I'm a very powerful physicist. Just by pointing at this, I can get this thing to stop or go. Stop, go, stop, go, stop, go, stop. And so what am I doing here is I have a very sharp point tip here, and this is just the same thing as Ben Franklin's lightning rod, where you put these rods at the top of your house, and this helps bleed off the electric uh, field from the char uh, charge from the clouds, and without having a discharge, 
the way you would have with lightning as you have on this side here. And so having this very sharp point keeps that from happening. Right. What else can we do? So that looks pretty good. Okay, so now what I want you to see is that I have nothing up my sleeve. Okay, is that right? I mean, no, and, and nothing up that sleeve either, okay? Uh, but I'm not going to use this hand. Uh, so it's only this hand. And I have in here an ordinary uh, fluorescent light fixture. And so I'm just going to try and see what I can do with this fluorescent light bulb. Okay? Right, so nothing yeah. in up his Nothing up my sleeve. Nothing connected. So I'm able to light up this light bulb without anything. It's just that the electric field from the, uh, this dome is lighting it up for me, right? Without any wires attached whatsoever. And so may the force be with you. OK, so now comes the time which I dread every Every year, show. every show, and my hair is not good enough, so I need <laughs> special hair. So I will get up on here, and before I put this on, I'm going to take my glasses off, because once I did this with my glasses on, and I got shocked between my eyeballs and my glasses. <laughs> and if you want to know what panic feels like, <laughs> that's how you find out what panic feels like. So I now know to take off my glasses when I do this. Okay. Nothing, nothing really good. Uh, do, so do I look good? <laughs> Pardon? On sideways. That's okay. <laughs> Beautiful. Does, does, does it look better now? Uh, you, you like it? <laughs> okay. So beam me up, Scott. I mean, uh, beam me up, Heinrich. See all the hair stick up? Turn around, sit. Okay, so now my problem is how, how do I get down? Ah, all right. Maybe we should turn this thing off and see we change the, <laughs> the shape of <laughs> the hairdo a little bit. All right. So that was a lot of voltage, very high voltage, enough to generate lightning bolts, smaller ones. But now we're going to combine that with high current. So this is now truly lethal. And to, we are going to run this current through a bunch of coils here. And it will generate a force that hopefully you'll is big enough we'll tell you. to cut right through one of these aluminum cans, like this. That's the idea. And so we need to generate a lot of current really fast at a very high voltage too. And that's what these enormous capacitors are for. And so we also can imagine that this will happen really fast. And that's why <coughs> so you and Sophia are setting up the cameras really carefully here. <laughs> and because this is really fast and involves a lot of force, you can imagine it's, it's really quiet. <laughs> All right, so I'll let you know when that happens. Are we uh, ready with the uh, camera set up? Okay, good. Okay. Well, actually, let's first turn this thing on. Put the key in the ignition. So while he's doing that, just do you know how much voltage comes out of your electric sockets? 120 volts, okay? So now you'll know that that's 120. Now you'll hear what Heinrich is 
putting to onto this. I'm, as this thing charges up, I'm reading out the voltage. Remember, 120 is what is in your outlet, okay? So now we are ready to charge this up. And here we go. 500. 1,000. 1,500. Anybody wants more? 2,000. We have three and a half, four, five, six, seven, eight for you. Eight and a half thousand volts. All right? Eight and a half thousand. That's a lot of volts. Are we ready? Yeah. Okay. Then I can push the button. Three, two, one. <laughs> All right. No. So you saw maybe this enormous spark, right? Okay. Yeah. The and you can just imagine what it takes to slice this through a hook is not on yet, like know. that. But uh, let's see if we can queue up the, the movie to play that back. Mm -hmm. And I'm just waiting for Sophia to say yes, and then we are ready to show it to you. All right, so let me turn this down here. You see what happened there? <laughs> That's what 8,000 volts can do for you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Sophia. Thank you. Tell you. Okay, so do you feel under pressure? Life's getting you down, you're under pressure. You don't know how much pressure you're under, right? So if you just think about air pressure, how much air pressure are you under, you know? Let's say if you have a square inch, how much force is on that due to the air pressure? Like a postage stamp, roughly. 14 and a half pounds on every postage stamp size area of you. That's all pushing on you right now. And thank goodness, the inside is at the same pressure so it pushes back. But what if it wasn't? So here we have a little demonstration for you. Okay, so we got that oil drum. And it's a big oil drum. This is the real thing. It's reinforced. And so now we're gonna turn on this pump and try and pump the air out. And we're gonna show you what that pressure that we're all experiencing right now is gonna do to that drum. Of course, it's a reinforced pump, a uh, drum, so not much is gonna happen, right? I mean, it's going to just stay there, it's gonna be strong and not going to... Uh, uh I mean, it's pretty thick steel too. You know, it's just air pressure, meaning that there's a lot of pressure on the outside, very little on the inside. You see that pump that's sucking it out on the inside. But it has, of course, these nice rings in there that are meant to get it more stability. It's a big volume, too. It will take a while, so uh, we'll have to see what happens here. Well, not much is happening. Yeah, that's maybe not good. Uh-oh. Huh. Why don't we bring out the Why experiment? Bring you know, let's, let's just see. I mean, maybe you're not under a lot of pressure. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, so that's what air pressure can do. Just ordinary air pressure, and you did nothing but take out the air. It's a modern art sculpture making, right? That's what uh, this is all about.
So now what we're going to do is the same thing. Is this is a tube. It's a plastic tube now, so you can see right through it. And we're going to pump the air out. So hydrogen is going to pump the air out. And it's being held. The air from the outside is not allowed to come in because we have aluminum foil at both ends of this so that the air can't rush in as he pumps it out. But this is very sturdy, so this is not going to collapse. Right, and so this is a little different, as Sid said, from the previous oil drum in the sense that we make sure that this is really thick enough plastic that will not deform. And the area back here that's exposed, that's covered with foil, is also relatively small. And the foil is relatively thick so that this will hopefully not cave in, right? So we, in this case, we don't want this to deform at all. But if I, and this is what this thing is for, puncture that in, air will rush in. And do you see what this yellow thing is down at the end, the orange thing? That's a ping pong ball. So what we're going to try and do is see if that ping pong ball can go all the way from that side to here and get out this uh, piece of uh, aluminum foil. But to see that, we thought, well, maybe we'd hold a piece of foam board in front of this to see what would happen there. But, you know, nothing much is going to happen. Look, I mean, this is foam board. That's just a, a piece of a ping pong ball. There's not much thing that that could do. I mean, the so idea is we want to create a little uh, gun-like thing, right? Air rushes in here, pushes, because there's no air here. It pushes with the same pressure, this ball this way, and then we think it might burst to that end, right? It's just aluminum foil. But what do you think? Will it make it through even more, a foam board? So, oh, you think I should make more than one? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> well, if you say so. Okay, so now I've got two foam boards. That, that should be enough, right? Yeah. No. Three? How can a, 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 a ping pong ball? Uh, okay, so here we have three layers of foam boards. I think this is good. Ping pong ball. So they can focus. That's why my fingers are. I'm going to take it out, I promise you. Uh, and because this air rushes in really fast, accelerates that ball really fast, it hopefully comes out really fast. We need to have a lot of light there, really good focus. And we want to show you afterwards what actually happened with that camera, right? And that's why Sid has to put his finger there also so we get it just perfectly in focus. Okay. Okay, so they say I'm ready. Notice I have taken my finger out of there. And now Heinrich is going to turn on the pump. Yeah, by the way, you might take your finger when we say, you know, when we give you the sign and put it in your ear, right? Because you can imagine this, this could be loud. Okay, so are we ready? Okay, I'm just turning on the pump. Now, nothing is happening yet. No, no, no. Now, pump, pumps it out here. So just pump it out. Hopefully nothing else is happening. Right, just the air comes out. That's all. See? No, nothing's happening. You didn't turn the pump up. There's a reason for that. Uh. One needs to turn the pump on. <laughs> and, and to plug it in. To do that, My goodness. <laughs> now the pump is on. And now. Okay, here it goes. Five. Ten. Fifteen. 20, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 
Okay, it's around 31. Okay. So, are we all ready? Ready? We're ready. Good. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Three, two, one. Now look at this, huh? It went right through. But you probably couldn't see what went on. I couldn't yeah, see it. Yeah. So that's why we want to try to play it back for you with the high-speed video camera. And uh, so I'm I'm getting the signal that we are ready for that. Okay, you see the board? There comes the ball. Goes right through. And notice the ball does not even deform. The little tiny ping pong ball is going so fast it does not even really notice. Right? And only later when it hits the wall does it crumple up. And how many frames? So that was the fastest so far. That was 20,000 frames a second. All right. So this is something you can only see here okay. with these high-speed video cameras. Okay. Oh, we don't need this. Okay, well, it's been a long day, and I think we're getting a little bit thirsty. So I thought that it may be time for us to have a drink. Okay. And what's better to have a cool drink, right? We want something really cold. So we're going to have a drink of maybe liquid nitrogen. How about that? So a little bit of liquid nitrogen, that can never do any harm. It'll be tasty and... Uh, Nutritious. Try this at home. Uh, um, okay, so I'm going to hold this bottle, and Heinrich is going to put some liquid nitrogen into this bottle. Okay, so there's some liquid nitrogen in this bottle. Is that enough? No? no? Okay, they, they want more. Okay, so there's some more liquid nitrogen in this bottle. Is that enough? Oh, they want more. That's barely any. Well, I'm not sure it's barely any, but just a little bit more. Okay. Okay, well, I know you're really thirsty, but I think th uh, this is about as much as we can do at the moment, okay? So uh, I'm now going to close off this bottle filled with liquid nitrogen and... I am going to put it in warm water. Do not try this at home. <coughs> okay. So what's going to happen now? No, oh, sorry. <laughs> Just a ladder. All right. Um, the, the, the ladder. Just a little announcement. So we love, we love to have you here, and, and of course we hope you like the show. But there's more. There is an open house. There is a oh. demo alley with hands-on yeah. activities. So if after the show, we'll, we'll show it now. You want to stick around a little bit? We have this all set up for you. You can play with a lot of these things you saw right now. Not the loud ones, but some of them. 
And uh, you get to see scientists in their natural habitat, too. All right? But we have, uh, we can show this last explosion. Oh, yeah, that's what we should see. On. All right. See, that was a real rocket, right? Okay, well, um, we are very glad that all of you were able to come here, and uh, we hope to see you all next year, same time, beginning of. Uh, December, first Saturday in December. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but at this point, I guess it's time for us to try and say goodbye. Yep. And so uh, we would like to wish you all a very good holiday season and see you next year. See you next year. <laughs>